Hello everyone, welcome. Uh, in this video, I've decided to show you how to perform blood pressure skill on your patient. As a nurse, I know you have uh, access to automatic like supply and equipment to check your blood pressure if you need to perform that skill, but you need to know how to manually perform this skill, very important skill on your patient. So in order to do that, we need to make sure we have everything that we need. Uh, we do need the stethoscope, we need the blood pressure cuff, and also positioning the patient. In order to perform this skill, we need to make sure patient is comfortable, either on a supine position, uh, with head of the bed elevated, to the comfort of the patient, and the you know, appropriateness of the the skill that you are performing or sitting position and as you see I have my patient in a sitting position and also positioning yourself comfortably in order to perform this skill um, I am sitting on the patient's right side and make sure uh, to let your patient know to or help your patient support the arm that you are performing this skill this arm should be at the level of the heart if it's lower or is different in different position then the blood pressure is not going to be accurate so first thing first we need to know how to find two pulses on the upper extremities when it comes to checking the patient's blood pressure one is the brachial artery which is located um, at the arm actually at a little bit above like one to two centimeter above like cubital fossa and a little bit toward the medial side close to the patient and the other one is the radial uh, uh, pulse which is coming from radial artery that one is located i can show you on my um, hand located at the base of your thumb a little bit close to yourself that's going to be the medial part not the lateral so how to palpate we are not using the thumb to palpate the pulse because we do have a strong pulse on our own thumb and that's radial pulse you do not want to palpate your own pulse not uh, instead of your patient pulse so then it's better to find the pulse by pal by using two fingers one index finger the other one the middle finger and palpate to find the pulse how long we should palpate to find the pulse usually five to six seconds it's palpable and then when you're checking the pulse make sure you're checking for rate rhythm and strength is the pulse weak is the pulse normal or very strong and you know uh, pounding sensation um, then in order to do that before uh, checking the actual blood pressure you need to also find the estimated systolic pressure I'll show you guys how to do that so I do have blood pressure cuff how to apply blood pressure cuff and as you guys see here um, you do have the sign that says artery mark so this should sit right above the brachial pulse so I'm going to go ahead and apply it, there you go, and make sure you are using the accurate and proper uh, blood pressure cuff size for your patient, because if it's too, la too large or too small, then blood pressure is not going to be accurate. And then there is a gauge that we can actually have it sit right here. There is a place for it. So while we are uh, inflating the cuff, we can see the numbers. And then in order to find the estimated systolic pressure, we need to find our radial um, pulse and palpate that. And as soon as we find it and we locate the pulse, we are going to inflate the cuff. At one point when you no longer feel the pulse or, or that pulse obliterates, you need to look at the gauge and remember that number. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and inflate. Okay, let's say at 100, the pulse for me is no longer palpable. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of deflate this um, cuff at a rate of 3 millimeter of mercury per second. Okay, if it was 100, I need to add, or whatever number, whatever number you get, you need to add 30 millimeter of mercury on top of that whenever it comes to checking for actual blood pressure so this time i'm gonna go ahead and use my stethoscope 
Okay, and we are going to place the diaphragm right at the medial side of brachial artery. And I'm gonna go ahead and inflate my cuff all the way to 130. And going to deflate the cuff. The very first sound I auscultate is systolic blood pressure and very last one I auscultate is my diastolic blood pressure. And then I'm gonna go ahead and report that blood pressure to my patient. We report the blood pressure in form of even numbers. So blood pressure was 100 over 70. Perfect, after checking the blood pressure on your patient, you are going to assess, as I said, besides checking the pulses on upper extremities, we can check other stuff. For example, temperature, color, skin trigger, cap refill. So how do I check the temperature? We can use the dorsal pipe part of the hand and check the temperature on upper extremities. Is it hot? Is it cold? And then we can check the uh, patient's temperature by using the thermometer also. And then we can check the color. Is the color nice and pink, which is indicating good circulation? Is it like dark and purple, which is indicating uh, lack of circulation? And then we can check the, um, you know, skin trigger. Skin trigger is like you can check the dorsal part of the hand and pinch a little bit. And then as soon as you leave it, skin needs to back to the normal. Sometimes if it's not, that's indicating the uh, dehydration or basically based on the age, maybe the skin loss is uh, the collagen or also elasticity. Uh, when we get older, those kind of stuff may happen. Uh, and also the, you know, cap refill, we can check by uh, pressing at the, you know, fingers and or also the hands and see uh, how fast it's going to back to the normal. Usually we expect if you put pressure for five seconds and you re relieve the pressure, we expect that circulation back to the normal for two seconds. And that's a good, you know, um, circulation on the extremities. Also, we can check for uh, clubbing at the base of the, of the fingers. Usually clubbing indicates lack of, um, you know, oxygenation or severe hypoxia, which uh, then we can see that bulbous angulation at the base of fingers. And also we can check and see how our patient is breathing. Is patient having difficulty breathing? Are they using accessory muscles to breathe? For example, are they using the scalene muscles or SCM, sternocleidomastoid muscles, or they are normally breathing and the rate is normal? And then also if you can hear any wheezing, is it loud like that to, to the point that you can even um, hear it without using a stethoscope or is there any crackles, which crackles usually indicates like fluid in the lungs. So uh, yeah, it's, these are the, you know, assessments that you can perform when you are checking your patient's upper extremities. On the next video, I'm planning to show you guys how to check uh, pulses and what else to look when you are assessing the lower extremities. Thank you.